We're going to do some more questions. So up next, we've got a text message, Tarantula. Uh, for the Gorge Imbal, um, I messaged a cutie on a dating site. Do you see him replying? Thanks. Glad to see you back. Kitty Power. Thank you, Kitty Power. That was very kind. Let's have a look whether there's a reply or not. And then I think it'll be worth having a look at kind of the general situation for you and the site because a very important thing when dating on a site... <laughs> I just realized my husband is watching. Hi, um, can you switch over and watch the football for a little bit? Um, come back in two minutes. Um, a very important thing on a dating site is the buffer. When I worked for um, Elle magazine, a girl that worked there and used to sort of give love guidance from kind of a journalist point of view said the most important thing when dating on a site is to have a buffer so that if one person turns you down, you've always got something else to look forward to. I really hope I'm still married when I get home. <laughs> um, so let's have a look at the yes or no, and then we'll look at the general situation there. Let's see if Cutie replies. Cutie replies, a little bit wary, so I think your profile is very feisty indeed, but Cutie absolutely replies in a slightly terrified way. Um, no bad thing when starting to date, I find fear a very helpful emotion at the start of a relationship and indeed as it carries on. Let's have a look at one card for your general dating site situation. Fantastic. You are free as a bird. You're such an open-minded person and you are happy to talk to someone from any background, um, of any career. You are there for the experience and how much fun it is. You love people and there is no way you can fail because your expectations are nil. Your expectations are whatever happens, happens. You cannot lose. Well done for making that committed step towards your own future. Thank you so much. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed. In fact, this leads us on to what uh, we were dis oh actually uh, yeah what we were discussing earlier on just uh, quickly uh, was about is emotional infidelity the same as physical infidelity? And there are so many people that are online dating now, and some people not necessarily just go on dates, but lots of people just like the attention. They like to flirt, even if they are in a relationship. Is that right or is that wrong? There's, it's such a huge sort of multi-level topic because if you are actually in a relationship, going on actual dating site for me is bang out of order because you're, it's, it's exactly like um, going out and taking your wedding band off. If you're wearing it all the time. You're obviously lying by doing what you're doing. So if you're going on a dating site, but you're not actually looking for dating, you're just looking for um you know, whatever the banter that you're not getting at home, that's kind of lying unless you put it very clear in your profile. If you're going out on the town, you're taking your wedding band off or you're leaving your phone in the car um, just so that your, your spouse doesn't ring, that's lying. Lying is always wrong. However, like I said, if you are on a dating site and you are talking to different people and you're open and upfront about it, Great. Or if you are in um, what we all know as an open relationship, in my opinion, as long as everyone knows what's going on, there's, there's really no problem with that. The only problem for me that comes in, the only problem that turns it into cheating is if you are doing something that you know to be morally apprehensible. Now, that's where the question comes in. What if you are with somebody that sees this as morally apprehensible and then you see that as morally apprehensible. Kissing, holding hands, flirting. And to me, that's where communication comes in. Because if you're dating as grown-ups, you have to talk about all of this. And it's not a fun conversation, is it? It's not a fun conversation. It's exactly like the conversation of where is this relationship going? No one wants to have it. But once you've had that conversation, I find in my experience and my client's experience, once you've had that conversation, you can move forward towards the future and everyone knows what's going on. And I know that you feel like a, a you know, a bit of an unhinged lunatic saying, what do you see as cheating? Do you think holding hands is cheating? And it's, it's not, it's a conversation that you'd see in a sitcom, not in a drama, because it really is out there. But I feel that it really has to happen. And, you know, 
for you, Adele, as somebody who has kissed many frogs and found a prince, <laughs> how, how did you feel about it? Um, <laughs> I have kissed many frogs. <laughs> <laughs> but not actually that many, but they were very froggy indeed, weren't they? Were they were very froggy, yeah. I, I had my moments. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I suppose you just, you just keep going, don't you? And you find, you find the right one. And mm. I think the more you can just be yourself, the more it's just going to work. Like you said, when you start lying or trying to be something you're not, mm. then that's when the problems will come into play. But Imbal, uh, yeah. we're just going to have to quickly uh, mention that you're actually only here for just under an hour. Where's that time gone? Only an hour left with Imba. Now, she is going to the phone lines very soon, but Imba, it's very important to say that if they don't get hold of you today, you're actually going to be logging in from home. There's going to be stints next week where people can actually pre-book a reading with you. Is that right? Absolutely. I've got three, three, count them, not one, not two, but three um, stints on the phones next week. Each of them is only an hour long because I am a mummy like a lot of you, except for the daddies, first and foremost mummy. So I'll be logging in once during nap time and once during uh, evening time and once when um, daddy is going to be doing breakfast. So I'll be on, is it Tuesday, Tuesday 7, seven till, eight. till 8? Yep. Thursday 3 till 4. Thursday 3 till 4 in the afternoon. And then for you early birds, I'm going to be on next Sunday from 9 a.m. just for an hour. That's all I can give. But, you know, I'm giving you all I can give, really. That's great. Um, well, I mean, we really appreciate you putting the time aside for our viewers. So if you didn't get hold of Imbal today or if you don't before the end of the show, you've got three uh, slots coming up where you can pre-book a reading. It's £2 a minute because you are putting on, on hold. So, you know, we don't want to obviously place her on hold and then you don't call through and somebody else misses out. Um, so it is £2 a minute. But uh, that's Tuesday the 29th, Thursday the 1st of May and also the following Sunday. You can book now with our prepay team. The operators are there on 0808206777. So they'll put you into a slot with Imbal and uh, you'll hopefully be able to get hold of her that way instead. Um, so that's the pre booking times if you're interested. You'll read it with Imbal next week. Um, just so uh, you are aware, pre booking is where you're actually going to be booking an actual appointment uh, with Imbal. So it's set in stone, it's guaranteed. That's your time with Imbal. Uh, the prepaid service is obviously where you can call through, speak to the operators, and set up an account and buy credit, which you can use on the show with all the psychics. So uh, just so you are c uh, clear on what we're actually doing, it's a new thing we set up. In fact, I think Hazel Lee and Katie are going to be doing this as well, aren't they? Uh, they're doing that uh, next week. So, in fact, go to the prepay team and they can tell you about the other psychics that will be doing this as well. H Hazel's doing it every Friday, 6 till 9. Katie, every Tuesday, 10 p.m. till midnight. So, this is a new thing that we just set up where you can actually book a, an official appointment with these psychics. They'll be logging in from home. Right, but Inbox, we've only got to send her an hour left. We've got things to do. Go, uh, go. So, are we going to get Inbox to the phone lines? I think we should do one more question. Go yeah, let's it. do it. All right. Uh, <laughs> hi, Imbal. I've heard my ex Scorpio is not as happy in his relationship as ours, making out that his girlfriend won't let him even go anywhere himself or talk to me. It's ridiculous. Any insight? Let's have a look. Um, this is something that's a lot more common than you think, isn't it? It's a current partner not allowing any contact with the ex, sometimes for good reason, sometimes for no reason at all. Is it true or not? <laughs> So true. But do you know what? This isn't because um, she fears there's any romantic thing between the two of you. That's not why. It's because she's put it to, um, she's kind of made a target out of restricting his um, freedom in a very targeted and concentrated effort to. Um, putting him under her thumb. She's kind of training him like one would train a dog. Um, <laughs> the more I look at this, the more offensive it becomes. The, uh, the cards that are coming up is showing the Knight of Cups, which is the knight in shining armor, but that's what she is not concerned about. So she's not concerned that he still loves you, you still love him or anything like that. Um, but she's caught him, I'm picking up, she's caught him um, not cheating, but kind of doing very minor white lies here and there. Um, and on a completely another time, we can go into the pros and cons of those white lies and how silly they are. She wants to make sure that she's limiting him, that 
um, he always consults with her and she's slowly chipping away at his confidence and making him um, a bit more friendless is kind of her method. In my culture, we have a saying, don't put your healthy head in a sick bed. I don't know if there is something equivalent in English, but I, I would really, really feel that the less, the less you think about it, the better, because if he's really listening to her, she's turning him into someone that he isn't, into someone that you don't really know. Very bizarre, dodgy situation, isn't it? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Right, well, we're going to be getting Imbal to the phone lines now. Take some more private readings. Um, we've spoken to loads of regulars already on the show, uh, but new viewers, we'd love to hear from you today. Oh, we did promise we'd talk about Big Brother's Little Brother because you were involved with that. So just quickly tell us a little bit about uh, what you experienced as a psychic on there. Um, I was involved with Big Brother actually several times. The time that I was involved with Big Brother's little brother it was actually sort of going over to the studio and doing what they termed eviction prediction and having a little psychic look at who's going to be leaving the house that time. And they pitted kind of three psychics and two huge names. It was really the very start of, of my career. So I was like, you know, the, the one that got in just for looking cute on camera rather than sort of having a huge profile. Um, the other two psychics had a huge profile. They were hugely important. I came in and I was like, can I have my picture taken with you? Um, and I beat them both. And hi guys, if you're seeing me and yay me. Um, and uh, we also got pitted up just to, you know, put me in perspective, got pitted up against a pensioner who used to watch Big Brother all the time, and she got every single eviction right. So, which I didn't. There was one person that I said would get evicted, and that week he didn't, but he got sent to South Africa, which I think is, you know, several steps above getting evicted. But then the following year, I had to do um, photograph readings. I'm going to call them photograph readings um, because I'm not sure if we can talk about the actual things I was meant to read. Mm -hmm. um, in News of the World, and then the year after that, I had to do Big Brother readings for Sneak Magazine and seeing how um, how the careers are going to go for um, for people after they leave the show. For me, this is you know a, a really fantastic light relief because it shows you that you can really sort of touch on everything with everyone. Those people are real people too, and just because. They're on the telly and just because they've got, you know, a reality show profile and so on doesn't make them any less real than yourself. And they've got really the same problems, don't they? Absolutely. Don't we all? Uh, well, there you go. So a bit of background on Imbal and some of the work that she's done previously. Um, but she's going to be heading to the phone line. So you get an opportunity to speak to her in person now. Don't forget the show's for entertainment purposes only. So no questions on finance, health, pregnancy or legal matters. And you need to be over the age of 18. We're still going to keep it to 10 minutes and maximum time. So it's fair on everybody else that wants to try and get through to Imbal today on the show. Because it's the only time that she'll be coming in. It's the only place that you can get hold of her at the moment. So make the most of her being here. Imbal, let's get you back to the phone phones, get you prepared to speak to as many viewers as you possibly can. I'll see you very soon. You will indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Bye -bye. So Imbal, heading back to the phone lines right now. I'll